Hello, this is Rafa Mampo, Freelance Telecoms Professional. I'm talking in the next minutes about the Internet Multimedia Subsystem Architecture. We are going to review the main elements of the IMS architecture. The first one is user databases, circled in red in the figure. There are two user databases. H SS is the home subscriber server, which contains all the user-related subscription data. It's the master database regarding user information. Sometimes there is more than one HSS. In that case, a subscription locator function database is needed to locate the HSS that holds the subscription data. Both databases are implemented using Diameter Protocol. The heart of the IMS architecture is the Call Session Control Function, CSCF. It's formed by three elements. In the figure, you can see such elements red circled. Now we will talk about the PC. SCF, that is the proxy. The proxy forwards SIP requests from an IMS terminal to another IMS terminal. It should be said that SIP is the protocol that terminals use for signaling purposes. There are several proxies in the network. During the registration process, a proxy is assigned to an IMS terminal and it does not change for the duration of the registration. The main function is to provide secure transmission of the SIP signaling and also to interface towards the policy control architecture. Another element is the interrogating call session control circled in blue. It is located at the edge of an administrative domain, which means that this element is the first point of contact for peer IMS networks. The interrogation function is related to the home subscriber server. It asks the home subscriber server about the serving call session control that is assigned and routes the SIP request to that specific server. The serving call session control is now circled in blue. The serving is the central node of the signaling. The main function is to provide routing services to the SIP signaling and to withdraw operations that cannot be performed with the assigned network policy so that we can say that it's a kind of SIP server that maps the IP address to the SIP address. The serving call session control also interfaces with the HAM subscriber server to retrieve and to update user information regarding the actual session. Uh, well, so at this moment we have established the call or the session and next step is to run the services for that call or session. Uh, services, for example, a video calling. This function is performed by the application server which may be composed of several servers, each of them devoted to a specific service. There are three operation modes and also services can be of different types. The main type is SIP services, which are the native IMS services, but there is also support for 3G and 2G. We'll see such types of 3G and 2G application servers in the following slides. Notice that since there are several application servers that handle different services, 
it's necessary to coordinate such services when a rich application is offered to the user that is composed of several services. That's the reason why it's necessary to allocate management software for that purpose. Those pieces of software are called Service Capability Integration Managers, SCIM. IMS supports OSA services since from the IMS architecture's standpoint, OSA is just another application server. OSA services are a type of services standardized from the 3G world. The services are intended to provide applications developers with an easy interface to the network functions. Uh, for example, an OSA application can invoke a single web service request to get the location of a mobile device or initiate a telephone call. Parlay is the AP for application developers to develop services based on OSA Open Standard. In this slide, there is a brief explanation of Parlay Basis, which is a set of telecommunications web services. Camel is another application server for ancient GSM, that's 2G services. That way, Camel applications can also be used in an IMS environment. The Media Resource Function, MRF, is a kind of toolbox that facilitates multimedia processing, as for example the transcode between different video and audio coding schemes. The MRF is divided in two functions in order to separate the signaling plane. There may be other toolbox elements that facilitate applications development. For example, the BGCF is a SIP server that routes calls based on telephone numbers. Let's look at the BGCF in more depth, which can also be seen as a gateway to the public circuit switched telephone network. As it happens in all components of an IMS architecture, this gateway to the public switched telephone network separates the signaling gateway from the media gateway, and in the media gateway the control function is also separated. With respect roaming issues, the key element is the call session control proxy. That proxy should be located in the visitor's network, but if necessary, it can also be placed in the home network. And what about user identification? Now, the telephone number is not necessarily the best solution. It seems that an identification format similar to the email address is more efficient as public identification. Moreover, the IMS standard also takes into consideration that the same user can have several public user identities. Well, I hope you know half a flavor about IMS architecture basic principles. Next step is to understand how SIP protocol works, which is covered in next presentation. Thank you for your attention.